Hi, in this video of WPF, we will be covering the architecture of WPF. As we have already covered the introduction and now we know why we are going to learn WPF. But being a developer, even if you don't need to learn the architecture, like if you're a developer, if you start working with the WPF applications, even if you don't know about its architecture, you can continue. But being a software engineer, you should know what is inside the engine and how a particular application is working. So let's talk about the architecture. So if I'll talk, if you talk about the architecture of WPF, that will be consistent of the two things that is the WPF managed layer and WPF unmanaged layer. As you can see here, in managed layer, we have three DLLs or I should say the libraries with three components, the essential components of managed layer. That is the windows base, presentation framework and presentation code. Each of these DLLs would be having a specific task. We'll discuss about them in the same video. And then it comes about the WPF unmanaged core, which has a couple of things inside it like mail core and the windows codex. So these are the two, two things which are very closely related to the WPF. Rest are not only for the WPF but for the complete system like the CLR. CLR is a component for .NET framework. All right. So since .NET framework was a prerequisite of this particular course, so I am considering that you know this CLR variable that is common language runtime. And after that, it comes about your system like the Windows system in which we are working. So the Direct 3D. Uh, in core operating system, you would be having user 32, GDI, that is graphic device interface and device driver. So these are the three things which are closely related to operating system. But here we will stick to the WPF layers, right? So here we have a couple of layers, managed and unmanaged layers. So let's start discussing about each layer separately. So first we'll talk about the managed layer and in that we'll discuss about the presentation framework in the beginning. In easy words, I'll say like including the window, whichever control you are adding in the window in your application that will be coming from this presentation framework. And whatever you will do with those controls, even if you are putting some data binding or animation, that will all be a part of this presentation framework itself. Implement the end user presentation feature, including data binding, animations, etc. All right, that's what I said. It has windows, panels, style controls, layouts, etc. Means style control, like whatever controls you're putting in short, right? So they will all be coming from this presentation framework. Next comes it's the presentation core. Presentation cores will be responsible for all the graphic things. Like if you are creating some shapes, colors, and whatever drawing, whatever geometry you are doing in your application, as in the introduction, we have discussed like it does support the 3D graphics. So whatever the graphic things you are doing, that will be managed by the presentation core. So provide 2D, 3D graphics, geometry, shapes, including the visual elements. So whatever, as I, as I said, whatever the things you are doing it for the decoration, for the graphics, that will be handled by the presentation core. Next, it comes the windows base. Windows base will take care of those particular components which will not just stick to the WPF application but may also be used outside of WPF. Like if you are doing some putting some dependency injection, so if something is dependent, maybe that particular object may be dependent outside the WPF application, maybe in, outside this WPF. So those dependency objects will be a part of this this uh, windows base similarly dispatcher which is responsible for the multi-threading in WPF can also be put inside windows base because ultimately multi-threading is not just a component of WPF in other applications as well you can put this particular feature so windows base holds a basic element that can be used even outside of WPF so presentation framework, presentation core and windows base are the three things which were there available in the managed layer of WPF. Now we will talk about the unmanaged layer in which we had a couple of objects like mail core DLL and the windows codex. So let's talk about the mail core first. So basically 
as I said, it's unmanaged code. So basically, it will be a bridge. All right. Like if I know about the dot .NET framework, dot .NET framework does a couple of things like managed code and unmanaged code. Unmanaged code is the pointer. All right. So managed code also use some memory location, but there you directly don't use it. In unmanaged code, you use pointer to direct access the system components. Similarly, all those managed code, as you can see in the figure also, which I showed in the beginning that because of these unmanaged layers, your application, your presentation framework, presentation core are able to interact with these 3D and core operating system features. So it's actually a bridge. All right. So as your mill core and windows codex also. So mill core, as it's mentioned, acts as a bridge between the managed and DirectX user unmanaged API. So DirectX unmanaged uh, and user 32 and the GDI were all the part of the core operating system. So your WPF will be able to make an interaction with the uh, system using these mill core. Similarly, we have Windows Codex, which will do the coding and encoding thing for the image, video and all. So it's a low level API as of the mill core is also supports WPF application in image processing, image displaying and scaling. All right. So whatever is done means whatever the encoding and decoding will take place that will be done by the Windows codec and then it will be put on the window at the for, so that the end user will be able to see that includes a number of codecs that encode and decodes the image into the vector graphics and then after being converting into the vector graphics the image will be put over the window so that an end user can see it. So these are all the things which are very much related to the WPF architecture. So being an engineer, as I said, you should be aware of this framework. So in our next video, we'll start putting some practical implementation regarding the WPF. That is all for now.